Good afternoon, data nerds, and welcome back to Databricks Data and AI Summit here in our fabulous hometown of San Francisco. My name is Savannah Peterson here, joined by my co-host and co-analyst, John Ferrier. John, we look like the beautiful yeah. blue sky outside today. The Cube has got two days live coverage. It's blue skies, got the blue jacket, looking good. <laughs> I know. It's all good here. <laughs> I'm our sunshine, as always. Really excited, though, to invite our next guest, who's also bringing the dance moves with me up here. Raj, welcome <laughs> to the show. How are you doing today? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm doing great, <laughs> having a great time at the conference. Love it. Uh, what, what's your first impression walking around on the floor? There's a lot going on, lots of energy. It's <laughs> like things, energy is moving all to AI. And, and that, that's a big change. It's data, but it's data and AI. So, so it's like that's changing stuff and people are excited again. The conference kind of, you know, data conferences got a little slower and now they're picking right back up. So the exciting stuff, AI is changing stuff, shaking the market. You guys got an interesting uh, product, you got customers that are big customers doing a lot of data. Mm -hmm. Explain what your company does, and I want to get into it a little bit, because you got a unique use case there. I want to take a minute to explain what you guys do. Sure, so Prophecy is a data transformation co-pilot. We are all about making data users productive with the data platforms they already have. So if you use Databricks, you are going to be coding. And then you have data analysts who are like, I don't write Python, <laughs> I don't write SQL. So it's all about saying, okay, they are focused on providing maximum functionality, everything that you might need, everything under the sun, and we are like, but what about the users? And you know, and uh, people, GitHub Copilot made programmers so much more productive, and what about the data people building data pipelines? They're like, where's my Copilot? Who's going to take care of me? And we are like, here's your Copilot. We make them productive. They can do their job in half the time. When did Copilot come out? When did that, when you guys pushed that out? How long has that been out? So it's, it's been out, uh, so actually our whole product now is Copilot. We earlier had a low code visual drag and drop interface to build data pipelines, which was helping you write code for Databricks. Okay. And now what we did is Generative AI came and attached to it. Got it. So now Generative AI and visual pipelines, everything's helping you write code. So, but the AI features have come just now, last you, few months. So you guys were well prepared for that movement, you moved quickly. We got lucky, we were luck. building <laughs> just the right product, just the right I don't place. believe in luck, you make your own luck. <laughs> <laughs> like, we were, well, it's like you have to work yeah, hard, but luck yeah. shows well, up. Yeah. But, but it's, you've also been preparing for this moment for a little while, you mentioned yes. that you founded the Prophecy in 2017, you, yes. you, you bootstrapped for those first two years until 2019, yes. obviously really good timing, that, that is a part of startup success, well business success, doesn't matter if you're a startup. Data transformation, the ecosystem right now is really having a moment, which is probably why that grin on your face is so good. <laughs> yes. What are you seeing? What is the data transformation ecosystem like right now? So, uh, data transformation ecosystem is, so most people have all their operational data. They are, uh, you use a five trend or something, you get that data into the lake house, and if you see the press release this morning, you don't need anything but data breaks now. And once you get there, that's where the real work starts. This is your data factory. This is where you're going to combine data, right? I'm, say I'm doing some credit card stuff. I got to get my customers and my, uh, you know, and their spend and my rewards and get them all together, join them, combine them, clean them, make a report, make the business dashboards. Also, put it all together for AI. So all of that is like more and more is being asked of the data teams. And what's happening with data transformation is people are like, I've got to do more. I was doing this table stuff, I was doing reporting, I was doing dashboards, and now I got to do generative AI. We are pushed beyond our limit, how do I do more? And everybody's like, okay, I want productivity, right? And productivity is name of the game in data transformation, and that's why I have the smile on my <laughs> face. What's well, and okay. across the organization, though, one of the things that stands out to me is, it's, it, you're looking at, at up, upping the data literacy across the organization, so that yes. everybody knows what good data looks like, can manage good data, and then use all these tools. Definitely, earlier it used to be that the line of business people were either out of the picture, Right, sometimes the business people who are uh, data analysts who are experts in their data or data scientists would send requirements to the data platform team and say, oh, go code this for me. Then they code it up, they come back, and it's like, oh, that's not exactly what I wanted. Can you change this? And going months and months. Or Alteryx came in and got some users who are like, hey, here's your own system, just doesn't scale, runs on your desktop, Windows desktop. Like, you know, <laughs> that's an era. <laughs> so now, uh, you know, so, these guys have not been all productive. Now we are looking at it and saying, oh, you got this really good platform, like the data bricks or the data platforms, and just like, I want to enable all the users. The data engineers, yes. Data analysts, yes. Data scientists, yes. 
you can't move fast with data if people are depending on other people and using Word docs. Like everybody who wants data has got to have access to it. You want to transform it for your business use case today, you have got to be able to do it. You're not waiting three months for data platform team. Those days are, you know, disappearing And so fast. you're providing the tooling layer for that product? Yes, we are, we are providing the tooling layer that makes data engineers also and data analysts and line of business users, all of them productive with data. Like a data analyst, using visual drag and drop and some English, generative AI, just say, I will yeah. build me a pipeline that does this. And we build it for them. Yeah. And that runs on Databricks, yeah. native code, at scale, massive data set, like a top data engineer, right? And now, generative AI puts that in the hands of the data analyst. They are at parity with the data engineer. So you like what he was saying on stage today about, hey, just plug into our lake, and then just pull the data, manage the data, may the best engine win. Oh yes, may the best engine win, but but you see, the, for data processing, may the best engine win, but it's like, <laughs> what about the data user? Yeah. Who, you know, the, all the engines are competing, adding more functionality, you had ingest, you have yeah. transform, you have quality, you have observability, you mm -hmm. have generative AI, and it's like, okay, who's got to understand all of this yeah. and get the job done? Who like, that? Who thinks about the poor user? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. so, uh, so as Databricks is anchored on and focused on data functionality, we are anchored and focused on the data user. We are saying that's the second more, you know, anchor in the data market. That's the most important thing. Uh, okay, so I want to ask you, so as GenAI comes in into focus, um, there's the old way and new way. You're starting to see the new ways. You guys had the low code, no code, now co-pilot. Yes. What's the old way that's going to be disrupted by the new uh, innovative solutions that are coming out now, because as this new future emerges, yes. things will, it's, just, it's a disruptive enabler. It'll, it's going to yeah. disrupt the other stuff. What will be disrupted? What do you see in the old legacy companies and how they deal with data transformation? So there are legacy companies who used to have a vertical stack where they did everything. Informatica would say, here is our product. You do visual drag and drop and build pipelines. And by the way, we'll store them in our proprietary format and then you're going to get you locked in. Then you have to run it on Informatica. The customer moves to the cloud and say, Informatica doesn't run on at scale. Databricks does. I want to run it on Databricks. I want to run it on Snowflake. It's like, you know, so you can't lock people in. So in yeah. the old way, you had the stack built by, mm, okay, okay, engineer, so Informatica, data stage, ab initio, these people, these are dinosaurs, these are dead. Like people are moving to the cloud and they're like, we yeah. want to leave all of them behind. Those are like, those companies' revenue is going to dwindle like anything. And Alteryx, God, like yes, they have a product for line of business, doesn't scale, Windows desktop, right? So let's say you have a new yeah. use case, you have a new line of business, what are you going to buy? You move to the cloud, generative AI, you want to buy a desktop app? It's like, no. People are coming yeah. to us and say, I want that Alteryx experience natively on Databricks. We're like, here's your tooling, you don't need. And we'll also import them for you, by the way. So all those companies are dead, they kind of know it, but their revenue is going to dwindle. Yeah. So the, all of that is going away. And, 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 and if there's no unification, they become just a, 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 a legacy silo that's just sitting around till it's end of life. Yeah, that's I mean, right. a legacy silo, you've got, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, th that's just it. I feel like there's there's this transformation wave that's happening here, and I love your hot takes, Raj. We're going to have to bring you back on as an analyst, man. Yeah, just like, laying like, down <laughs> the sound bites right now. <laughs> but but I like it. I, 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 what I think you're hitting on, and, I, and I'm curious to, to confirm this with you, we're really at a juncture where you're either on this fast train, like we're talking about, and, and willing to open up to be open, open source like we were talking about all day, or at least be open to great collaboration and, and tool yes. sharing, or you're out. Or, or you're out, like the locking in silo business is done, but also, uh, as people are, we got some music in the background. <laughs> That's okay. Continue. Oh yeah, we can always, <laughs> we can always pause for the beat on the queue. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but like, like I'm saying, like as a startup, we are getting generative AI. Generative AI is building half your pipeline. Are you going to go back to that old way and build it all yourself, locked in a silo? You're not going to do that. So basically, the co-pilot has got to work with the ecosystem you have. You have the Databricks ecosystem, it's going to work with that, plug into everything, make you more productive, generative AI doing half the work. Now all the old tools, are they based on generative AI? No. They'll put a sticker somewhere saying, oh, we have this generative AI, Informatica will put clear, does it do anything? Doesn't do shit. Like those people don't have the best generative AI engineers. Nope. Nope, that's <laughs> not your future. You're you betting your future, if I'm buying, I'm a customer buying, I'm betting my future, 
I am not betting my future on one of those guys to have the best generative AI talent to build all these pipelines. What are some of the best uh -huh. use cases that you've seen for best practices as people start to rethink about horizontally scalability, agile, uh, more, more speed, more automation? Agents yes. are coming. What's, the, what's, that, um, what's that best practice for getting ready for it and actually implementing it? Yeah, so Besides throwing away the old legacy, but like, like if I'm going to reset set the table, what does so, it look like? So I'll, I'll give an example, right? Um, we had one large customer, one of the largest pharma customers, uh, uh, with a name that has the name twice. <laughs> um, that customer, they went to Gartner, they talked about it, they had data engineers and business data users. Business data users were not enabled sending them Word documents and saying build that for me. They put the co-pilot straight in the data users' hands, they're building their pipelines themselves. All the dependency, the back and forth with data platform team is gone, they're productive, they're getting data 10x faster, their, their throughput is 10x more. They're saying we're creating 10x the tables, 10x the assets and reports, then the same team's productivity has shot through the roof. And some other companies like the largest health insurance company, Fortune 5, what they have is they're moving they moved 21,000 jobs from ab initio to Prophecy on Databricks. Woo! That's a massive, massive footprint, that right? That probably made That's, you feel good. That made us feel good. Hundreds of data yeah. engineers using us, right? So, so they are coming in and they have a data platform team that sets the standards. They write the code, you can do that in Prophecy and say here is the standards. And then they push it out to all the business users who are like, okay, we are going to do the day-to-day -day work. Fast, 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 data platform team setting the platforms both of them getting productive, of course, with generative AI. Um, that's the future. So you see companies so, essentially do a full reset. I mean, Ollie went on stage today hinting that they had to redesign everything around serverless, and they had a big technical debate. This is kind of like a do-over for data. You got to reset the everything. That's what you're basically yeah. saying. I mean, yeah, get the data engineering it, it, team a, in. It's a do-over, yeah, completely. The data engineering team gives you the platform, uh, you know, sets the standards. The line of business team builds all the data pipelines themselves. I mean, they can build a few ones, central ones, but yeah. most of the day-to-day -day pipelines go to all the business users who understand their data, who understand what yeah. they need from that data. You're not playing telephone with these people. So yeah. I, I think I think that's the future, and and you know the co-pilots are going to make everybody a solid, solid data engineer. I mean, this is not going to be like, oh, you have these few people in the back room who can do that. Yeah. That world is going away fast. It's going to up-level everybody. Well, up it's going to give everybody. us the AI and the data yeah. literacy that we've all been hoping for, but across the organization, it's upskilling. It's when everyone's worried about jobs. We're actually just all going to get smarter together, which I think is awesome. Yeah. I want to bring up a question. So, it's clear you have your finger on the pulse because all of your customers, or a large group, group of them, are in the Fortune 50. You're working with the biggest and the best and the brightest right now. You mentioned healthcare as an earlier example. I know we were talking about tech and you're working with some of the biggest tech companies in the world too. Are, is the behavior, are the trends, are they similar across vertical? Are you seeing different things in their adoption of co-pilots? What, what's going on? Yeah, actually the, the tech companies, they, they, initially we thought the banks, the pharma companies, the healthcare companies would buy us, but now the tech companies are using us. And what's happening is they have their own clouds and their own clouds have competing products but actually some hyperscalers are using us and are our largest customer, like millions of dollars. And those customers are like, I want to get productive, think of a search team, think of these, like those people who are in core engineering, they've started to adopt us, but when they get us, they hit the ground running so much faster. Like we had a customer come in yeah, yeah. and grow 5X within a year. Because in a bank, it would have taken us a year to get everything together. Uh, you know, one of the bank, some banks move faster. One of our investors in the last round was J.P. Morgan. You know, there's bank who moves faster yeah. on technology, and but but then there is you know other people who are just you know uh, taking months and months to get stuff set up. So your, so your yeah. customers are big, big, established whales like the big banks right now because yeah. they have the biggest state data states that are fragmented and need to be re, <laughs> re, yeah. rebuilt from the ground up. Yes, they are bringing all multiple legacy products all into us on top of the data platform. So they'll be like, oh, get rid of the ab initio, get rid of the data state. They had some products in different business units, they acquired some more companies, they have these 10 silos on-prem, they're like, let's all move it into one data lake. Right, one single place, make everything standardized, and, and they don't want to get locked in. So that, that's, that's very, very important to them. So uh, us just helping them write open code, they love it. Yeah. Who do you think are the five hottest companies that everyone's going to be using in the next year as we see this separation? You mean 
five other like than... tools. <laughs> I mean, obviously they're going to be using you. Of course, obviously no. you're going to be so, using Databricks. No, I, I, I think it's actually. But who's going to survive? I think of the so legacy le le systems. Le let's let's legacy system. Who's going to survive? I, I, so I, I think uh, I think Informatica would be okay because they they cost okay and they have governance. They they have, they have a govern and. They, and it's like, they don't have the highest, like when we go to Fortune 50 and really big use cases, they're not there. They're in slightly small use cases, uh, not very expensive, okay. So they're like, okay, this kind of works. So so that they're going to be okay. The other vendors, Alteryx is not surviving this, Ab Initio not surviving this, Data Stage not surviving this. And then modern data stack, not surviving this. Basically what's happening is the data platforms, if you are in the, here is a line, under that is data processing. You had the Spark, you had SQL, you had Catalog, you had Databricks uh, got uh, Archeon, Ingestion, they are eating up everything. Snowflake's gonna look at that and say, I'm gonna eat up everything. So if you are a point solution, modern data stack in the processing layer, you're dead. Sell to one of these, <laughs> you know, yeah, and, or, or you're dying. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, once if you get one data quality company in and Databricks, let's say, gets one, and, uh, and, yeah. and they integrated, let's say. Well, Tabular just got bought for uh, Tabular, big money. Yeah. Um, you're seeing Lakeflow, you, we were talking about the TechCrunch article that yeah. talks about how they're not relying on Le some of the Le ecosystem. Yeah, I, I just read the article today and uh, Databricks is like, we don't want the Fivetran's of the world, the DBTs, all these things. Like, if you look at it, what does Fivetran do? It's just moving data from point to point. You know what, who's good at data processing? Databricks is, they're going to eat it up. So will Snowflake. What is DBT? It's like, I help you write code. You know what Databricks is good at? Helping you write code. Like, in that layer, you go to die. So we looked at it and said, uh-uh-uh. We are going up to the user, visual tools, productivity, UI, UX, the kind of stuff data platform people don't do. That's the other thing that's going to survive, right? And some, some catalogs might, like the Atlan and those guys, some of them will, because they are so focused on the business user. So e data platform, just the big ones, on top a couple of tools, and it's, it's, it's consolidating. What should Fivetran do if they see that that's going to be not an opportunity for them? Do they go away, they pivot? Because what, they have yeah. a good product. No, so Fivetran has built a product. I think the basic thing is they have to continue to be mostly mid-market, right? So what they have is they have a bunch of connectors. When you have a connector, your top connector is going to make this much money. The next one, this much, this much. After five to 10 connectors, it's the long tail. They don't make that much money. So what the data platforms are going to do is, let's pick the first 10 money makers, let's add that into our platform, give it for cheaper, built into the platform, you don't need Fivetran for that, right? So now they are left with the long tail. And, and, and that's the thing, the thing is on-premises ETL companies were single consolidated products, somehow the investors, A16Z in this case mm -hmm. and others, decided that point solutions in modern data stacks are the way to go. And the market is saying, no, no. they were single platforms on-prem, and they continue to be single platforms in the cloud. There is not going to be 50 different tools. In Informatica, you guys know, you should do everything. It's like yeah. data ingestion, data transformation, governance, they have the whole thing. So we are going back to that world. Okay, so if the big platforms are going to fill the white space with their product. Is for data gonna, processing, yeah. Uh, for data processing. Is there any other white spaces where the ecosystem could thrive? Because Ollie's on stage saying, ecosystem's super important to us. Ecosystem, I mean, you, you actually where, have where to add real value. It's like you can't tag on a small thing and say that's a company I'll attach to it. Same is happening with OpenAI. You can't add a thin wrapper on it, OpenAI comes up with new stuff and they eat it up. So, so you have to add real, real differentiated value on top. Yeah. Maybe you do something with generative AI that they're not going to build you. Maybe you build tools. You know, or so it, it's got to be really differentiated. Look at Mosaic ML. Was it a small add-on? No, they had like a serious product, right? Yeah. So you have to build serious, deep technology. You don't yeah. have to build these point SaaS yeah. solutions. Those are not going to. Remember survive. during the internet days, we used to say that's a feature, not a company. Most of that's these kind of what you're talking yeah, about. Exactly. It's a product, exactly. not a company. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's something. You got to have a, a differentiation that's going to be scalable and durable. Yeah. No, yeah. If you look at data quality, right? Informatica had data quality. Data Stage had data quality. So what I'm saying is. All of these were features. We knew they were features, right? It's not like it's, it's, it's news to anybody. We moved to the cloud and everybody said, no, that's a company. Okay, I'll, so yeah. so, so uh, Ali validated our research that said, okay, separate compute from the data, good things will happen. Yes. What do you see happening now that that's happening? Um, Databricks is going to have their little area, there's going to be ecosystem area to play. Yes. What's going to happen now that this, this new data platform, not the modern data platform, 
this next level, no, the separate next computer, what does it look like? Yeah, it's, I, I feel like the data platforms continue to get bigger and fewer. The cloud vendors cannot buy companies. Lina Khan, entire Bay Area is going to go vote Democratic. <laughs> they, the Democrats are going to put Lina Khan. The Lina Khan is going to say, you know what, you can't <laughs> sell companies to Microsoft, you can't sell them to Amazon, you can't sell them to these big giants. Who else is going to buy the companies? Yeah. Well, they're yeah. all available well, for maybe, data Maybe they'll, 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 they'll vote up. Democrat and vote Lena Khan out so that yeah, we can actually have some <laughs> liquidity. <laughs> very important for Silicon yeah. Valley to have liquidity yes. yeah, yeah, or yeah. have exits. Yes. Like who, yeah. all these billion dollar valuation companies, who's going to buy them if there's no Microsoft, no, no Google, right? So, so basically, but till they can't acquire, who's going to acquire? Snowflake's going to acquire. Mm -hmm. They've acquired like six, seven, eight companies in the last quarter. I think seven companies in the last eight quarters. So has Databricks. So these are the people who keep getting fatter and fatter, uh, wider and wider. The I rich get richer. Uh, the rich uh, get I don't know what's politically correct <laughs> to say these Just days. say the rich get richer. <laughs> the rich, the rich, the More rich, robust the, in their the, offering. Yeah. They're prospering. The, 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 the rich get richer and we have to find new places. Perhaps with Generative AI, you really have to have a paradigm shifting company. You have to have an Uber, something like that that near, never existed and has a deep technical moat. That's yeah. the way to survive these small little point features. Is I think Uber's a great example. I think they represent, to me, they built from scratch with their bare hands, so to speak, a modern data platform that's more AI. They do a lot of things. They do a lot they of things. They do a lot yeah. of things that's hard to do that enterprises need to do quickly. So do you see yourself kind of in that role where you're going to come in and help them get there? Or, I mean, yes, I, I, th I think the, the enterprise data stack, Databricks prophecy, this is all about getting that technology with much lesser cost, not with armies of engineers that the big tech companies had, without that getting this into the hands of enterprise, and, and enterprises can catch up pretty quickly. Raj, you're like an analyst on our team now. We love I, you I on the cube. I know. <laughs> let's, let's get a plug in for your company. Tell yeah. us about Prophecy, what you guys are looking to do, why people buy you. Give the, give, put, a, put a plug in for the company. Sure. Prophecy is uh, focused on making data users productive. We talked about that. Large, you're a large enterprise, you want to move to the cloud, you want to get very productive, you want to spend half the time doing the old data stuff, free up the other half time for doing generative AI, you get prophecy. So prophecy, you come in, yeah. you get your business users productive, get put data in every user's hand, get it ready for analytics, for reporting, for BI, for generative AI, ready much, much quicker. So that's what companies, it's yeah, very yeah. simple. And, yeah. and actually, I, some, somebody said, I don't know who must be one of the founding fathers, like, you know, good arguments are simple. So we have a good argument, it's simple. You have users, we want to make them productive on the platform they already have. That's the argument, it's very simple. Yeah. But that, that's what good value add is. That's good value proposition. Well, I'm sold. That sounds absolutely <laughs> fantastic. All right, last okay. question for you, Raj, because when we have you back on the show many times, now that we've <laughs> seen how your brain works, I'm curious what you hope to be able to say on the show next time. We'll, we'll say at the next Data Break Summit, so to give you a year looking out that you can't yet say today. In terms of the market or prophecy? Prophecy. Both. Whatever anything. you want. Whatever I want. At this point, tell do us both. anything. The do weather, both. I mean, you know, yes. the state of health so, do both. We'll take your opinion Market on and prophecy. What's going to change? What's so, going to be different? So I, I think what I wish happens by next year is that everybody comes in convinced that, hey, I buy a platform, I buy a co-pilot, and I'm good to go. Like, that becomes the default stack, right? I buy a Databricks, I buy a prophecy, that becomes that. And then the other thing I'm looking for is I want to see use cases of people who come in and say, I use generative AI, my co-pilot actually worked, these are the 15 users who got productive, and they are doing 5x more. It's, it's about taking it from this promise stage to delivering real value on the ground. That's what I, I think what's important. So we've talked so much about AI. We've talked so much about the promise of AI. Now we need value delivered in the next year, and, and I think we're going to do it. I love it, let's deliver that value. Mm -hmm. My goodness, John, this has been quite a dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel <laughs> I, a lot of hot takes coming out of this. Raj, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you, it was such a pleasure talking thank to you. Thank you, thank you. And thank all of you for tuning in and grooving with us here on the Databricks Data and I Summit a show floor where it is absolutely pumping. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE here in San Francisco, the leading source for enterprise tech news.